No matter how much it has changed due to the effects of the fairy world, the biological characteristics of the plant receiving sunlight, conducting photosynthesis, and feeding off of the land and water should be no different from regular plant life. Yes, so Ignis should be able to burn it up. As the GPM R&D department head Mikado had once analyzed, though it is out of the ordinary, Hydrasyl is still a plant. It has no eyes to perceive tragedies, nor ears to hear the cries of the fairies. It does not answer prayers, nor does it think or feel. Yes, the only thing Hydrasyl has is the eat or be eaten survival instinct. But now, you drassle. It's shaking with anger. Oh, we get some different music, y'all. Even when it desires sustenance to heal, its food source, berries, cannot be found. Where my food at? <laughs> the roots that... The roots that are extended out to five food have been cut down by someone, one by one. The lack of food and the swarm of enemies that seek to harm it are, for the world tree, a threat comparable to what occurred 500 years ago. Thus, you drassle. Guided by anger, an emotion the world tree shouldn't have. Yeah, I'd be hungry. I'd be angry when I ain't uh, hungry and I ain't have anything either. I don't blame that tree. But for sake of the story, <laughs> tree, shut the hell up. <laughs> oh. Oh, shit. Hey, your Drassel's Nexus, the Queen's Quarters, the roots and flowers quickly become visible. Like a blooming flower, enemies begin to appear one by one. The fairy siblings' expressions, expressions tighten. All <laughs> bets were off when you yanked out Titania. But I'm pretty sure at this point, Titania would have probably died. The soul eaters are tentacles designed to consume fairies' souls. Normally, they do not appear near the throne where the bride offers her soul. Even during Yajasul's chaos 500 years ago, they never once appeared in this location. Then why? Rutro, so y'all, y'all are the, well, y'all and Connors are the remaining fairies. Uh oh. <laughs> Yo, that's pretty messed up. What if Connors was like, or no, what if Katone, Katone is like, mm, well, you should have thought about that before you threw me up in here, idiot. Venia backs up step by step while protecting his scornful sister. If he is attacked here, it would pass as a well-deserved punishment. Yes, we stand well-deserved punishments here, y'all. Either he gets cut down by the Dullahan, or eaten by the Soul Eater. Either, either way, that would be the end of it. However, his sister must be spared. Ooh, Ooh shit. <laughs> as if they a lack of combat skills, the rising roots extend themselves at once. However, the hands of evil suddenly soar through the sky. 
the hell? All of them abruptly stop midair and fall to the ground in an instant. The squirming of enemies seem to avoid advancing any further than a certain distance. At the center of it, it is. Bleh. At the center of it is obviously. What's happening to her? It's all like, what the hell? Do you guys look kind of like power we don't know about? They look up to see Katone, who was supposed to be indisposed, holds her head up a little and stares at the soul eaters. Ugh, <laughs> Okay, let's just read. Let's read. <laughs> the soul eaters that surround Veni and Titania, still standing in shock, slowly close their distance between them. What? Stop! As if to be struck by Katone's voice, the soul eaters freeze in position. Oops, whatever. <laughs> Basically, the, 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 the why was already out there. Oh no. Oh gosh, this might be a bad ending. Oh lord, y'all. <laughs> I can't. From Katone's point of view, she has no reason to leave or protect them. They cannot believe her actions. Despite Venia's dumbfounded expression, Katone lightly smiles at Titania's plea. No, if I quit, you'll be attacked. You, my friend, have finally been liberated. You're able to use your... I can't use my own mouth. You're able to use your own feet now to visit Enchante. I refuse to let you become the World Tree Bride again. Katone, no! Baby girl, no! <laughs> Venia suddenly loses his balance. And get snatched up by the soul leaders. The end. He could hear. Uh, he could hear the voice of a certain someone in Katone's words. Are you feeling? Are you feeling regret, Venia? You prick! You shouldn't have put us in this position. Yep. Why? Pull me out! If you can pull me, get me out! Pull me out! What are you doing? いいよ。まだそんなこと。僕だってできるなら解放してやりたい。いっそ今なら僕が変わってもいい。are you sure about that? What? But what? Oh, what? However, from the beginning, the circumstances didn't allow for them to properly think of a plan. <laughs> the roots mobilize and soul eaters start to appear again in pursuit of the final source of food. 
Despite being stopped by the queen's powers, the spirits slowly surround them again. Kotone stares them stares down at them once more. Don't come near! But as an act of defiance, they're like, fuck that shit, we eating. <laughs> the bindings of the throne violently and rapidly entangle her body. Not only her limbs, but her torso and breast. Okay, we hentai now. They even firmly wrap around her neck. Oh no, they got her! No! Mesa. So. Mesa, the tail of Dasma. Sekaiju. Without any regard to anyone's feelings, you drastle indiscriminately and relentlessly tries to consume everything. Even the souls of all present living beings. Ooh, that tree fell. So we all died the end. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no! Look at that cute picture of us. Are we dead? <laughs> it fades. Fades away. The many memories that make me who I am. You drassel, which has a hold on my soul, chokes me and takes me away. <sighs> The person that enjoys talking with regulars. The person that brews coffee while smiling and laughing at the counter. I don't want to lose any of them. They're all my treasured, or they're all treasured memories yet. One by one, they, became, they become foggy and get ripped apart. Like a once colorful tree in autumn withering away in the winter. <laughs> My memories, I don't know what the kind of scream that was. My memories, my recollections, myself, they're being stripped one by one. But even still, I will not forget, no matter how much of myself is stripped, I don't want to forget. One word. This word only consists of five letters. Ka. Ka. This. I just repeated so. Like a plea. Like a prayer. The one word. That clearly holds passion. I will never let go of it. Kanas. As if to answer my prayers, a single blade cuts through. The countless soul eaters in Yadrassel's tentacles that surround me are all destroyed in an instant. Even the throne that constricted me has been cut up into a thousand tiny pieces. My body is gently picked up. A cold and hard set of black armor. But I know the warm spirit that pulses beneath it. Assertive and gentle. And as reliable as anything. Yes, he came. That's why the screen is white. Just kidding. The person that I hope to never forget. Aww. That's adorable. Kindness. That's 
after noticing that I'm still conscious, he draws his sword again. God, how tiny am I <laughs> compared to him? <hell? laughs> With his powerful tone intact. たとえ他の誰であろうとも、琴音を奪わせはしない。彼女を守る者として、彼女に寄り添う者として、このカヌスエスパーダがもらい受ける。now oh, wait till you kill the tree, then take me. <laughs> As if to be stunned by his overwhelming dominance. The distant soul eaters in the surrounding area don't seem to move any closer. <laughs> While still carrying me in his arms, kind of jumps away from the rubbles of the throne and heads towards Titania and Venia, whom he apparently had also just saved. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. It's okay. I believe in you. All of you, Kana. <laughs> After he gently embraces my body once again, Kana's faces toward Benny and Titania, who are still slightly dumbfounded yet slap sighing in relief. <laughs> Why are you asking him? At this point, just shut up and then let him do what he gotta do. Then you can um ask when everything's all said and done. Don't ask him now. I didn't hear anything. At the exact moment, Venny a bit down uh, on his lips, trying to process all the emotions he can't express. Yidrasil begins to shake. Where the fuck's my food? What? Well, we ain't gotta worry now. We can, we can book it. At this point, even Kanas and Titania begin to panic. Wow, you, you had to destroy your own world. What? I know you're not gonna try to be a um a martyr. The Venia's words were filled with petulance. Connus responds. 
That is all he said. The quake is so violent that the collapse of the Nexus could happen at any moment. In the midst of the chaos, Countess's words are quiet, but unshaken, filled with conviction and determination. Another quake. It was large enough to topple over the soul eaters and tentacles that have been surrounding us. Oh god. I just thought about something. This might I don't know what ending this is at this point. If it's a good ending, he'll come out of this alright. But if it's a bad ending, I think the tree's gonna kill him. Yeah. Kinda says as he pulls something out of uh pulls something from his chest. That's the Positions. Then, after Kanas releases a large sigh, Mira, with his low and clear-cut voice, he calls out to the others over the radio. Hi, hi! Wale da ga master no tame dara, mao sama wa yorokonde sekai no kyoi ni narimasu tomo. Ore ni totte ya uttetsuke no obutai da. Nanse mawari ni wa yoku moeru maki shika nei kara na. Surprised that they let him say that. <laughs> Look at all this shit to burn. <laughs> okay, Ignis. I might have to go after you next. You sassy tongued fire wolf or whatever the hell you are. Aratame must be. Ikino Kota Zen Yose no Hina, Yudo Kanyo. It's the Modaiki Bohakai Okonaimas. Soreto. Over the radio, I can hear the voices of the most powerful beings in the universe, whom Venia has deemed worthy. Suddenly, Drassel begins to tremble and makes a loud creaking sound like a shriek. He's like, fire! It doesn't exist in media. What the hell? <laughs> One can sense what had happened without having to having directly witnessed it. The others scattered throughout media must have attacked Drassel all at once. Oh my gosh. I can hear Drassel burn and collapse from the outer perimeters. As if to corroborate my assumption. What? The tree just stopped shaking. While the siblings stand in awe of the overwhelming powers they can feel.
kind of draws his sword because he has to get the last blow and take after taking one step forward powerful enough to smash the ground below he starts dashing toward the troublesome Yudrasil at an overwhelming speed his animalistic drive can mean but one thing kind of has just declared that you, this is Yudrasil's final moment in existence he aims at a single spot the one place strongly tied to Yudrasil the place for sacrificed bride the throne Kanis runs straight toward it in order to thrust his sword upon it. Yudrasil violently shakes at the imminent threat. With its quake, the numerous roots summon uh, the numerous roots and summon soul eaters. Yudrasil attempts to stop him in his tracks. But Kanis doesn't even flinch. In the face of his overwhelming power, Yudrasil's attempt at resisting doesn't stand a chance. Yep. Kanis begins to focus on his approach, growing sharper and stronger. By drastically increasing his own powers, a single blow might finish it off. How convenient. He follows up by saying, Oh, CG. He swings his sword with all his might, and while he slices Yudrasil, he takes his final step forward. His strike is to bring death upon Yadrasil, to destroy the throne, to put an end to all misfortune. Kanas imbues all of this power. All of this power? Oh, whatever. Kanas imbues all of his powers into his sword. And, alright, it's either this power or his powers. Whatever. And. <laughs> alright, sweetheart. <laughs> With a thunderous roar, he swings. And after Yudrasil viscerally cries in agony, without regeneration or retaliating, we need to get the hell up out of here. It has been handed its death and takes its final breath. Bars for days. As we set the tree ablaze. With the death of Yadrasil, which had held my soul hostage, I began to feel the movement of time. Once again, in an instant, my body feels light again, and almost seemed to float unassisted in midair. My attention's drawn to the tranquil scenery. What, did we die? Did, did, like, <laughs> should we just had not been in the Nexus when Connors killed it? My attention's drawn to the tranquil scenery. What the hell? What is that? Ah, that's right. Now that Yudrasil has died, he took all of us with him, and this is the bad ending. Those fairies are finally liberated, in the real sense of that word. I'm sorry for causing you years of suffering, for bringing you so much grief. But at this point, I haven't the time nor the voice to apologize as I should. So at the very least, allow me to pray. 
I wish for your happiness. And thank you, my dear sister. Oh, that's Banshee, my dear brother. Thank you for saving them. will not shut up the severed world tree sliced cleanly in half and though its life force is gone it remains still function as the land of medio some time has passed since the climax of the event it's almost sunrise kanas and i oh okay this is a good ending Yay! oh i thought i got a bad ending are on our way to a certain location a few hours earlier once the battle had ended Mizir and the gang decided on going back to Enchante and their respective worlds when they parted ways they knock on Connus's armor congratulating his work seeing everybody made me smile normally once the dust has settled I would be home by now but hell yeah let's go those words were the only reason I needed for me to remain on the world of Medio by the way with their congratulatory words everyone struck Karnas's armor one at a time again. Kana stopped walking. The whisper of snow echoes quietly. I trace his gaze to see. Ah, we come here full circle. The scenery we had once seen together, minus the tree. The place Kanas claims to be his favorite place of, in all of Medio. But this place too, now that Yadrasil has been defeated, will eventually wither away. But Kanas does not display, display fear for such a future. Kotome. Tebo. Yeah. <laughs> he gently reaches out, as if to prevent me from slipping in the snow. That would suck. We did all that and then like Katone slips and falls off the cliff and dies anyway. <laughs> Supported by his hand, I cautiously walk as my feet slightly tilt diagonally. We approach the location where we can see the entirety of Medio. It's breathtaking no matter when I see it. It's true that Yadrasil had tortured Kanas and the others for centuries, even though it was a threat. At the same time, this is where my memories reside with Kanas, and where I met Titania and Betty. <gasps> oh! Sorry, let me say that line again. <laughs> At the same time, this is where my memories reside with Kanas, and where I met Titania and Venia. The single world is coming to an end. This is a major event. It's something that I couldn't have fathomed when I first took over Enchante. I wonder what will become of the fairies, Titania, Venia, and most of all Kanas from this point on. That was certainly my concern, but... Kotome, it's time to get your eyes I didn't need to ask what it was. A soft wind blows. I can see them start to rise. As the world wel welcomes, welcomes the sunrise. <laughs> I can read, I promise y'all. From every visible place, light pours out from Yadrasil's remains. Ooh! Countless particles of light 
As they rise and make contact with my body, they dissipate and vanish. Along with the warm sensation, an overwhelming sense of power grows inside. It feels as if all of the life Yidrasil has been stealing from me is slowly being returned to me. No, that must be what it is. For this light is... Wow. Kanis, after letting out a sigh of relief, he too takes a particle in his hand and embraces it protectingly. Yes, the beautiful glimmers of light overflowing from the recently slain Yadrasil belong to the lives of the Eden fairies. Under normal circumstances, seeing life is not something an ordinary human like me can do. But as Kanis mentioned earlier, this time really is an exception. My body, which was tether tethered to Yadrasil, albeit only temporarily, seems to be exhibiting fairy-like characteristics, which would explain why I'm able to receive the life force of the fairies to recover my own life. Thank you. As I graciously thank the fairies for life now coursing through my healthy body, I subconsciously utter, I wonder what becomes of Medio from this point on. Hmm. Kanis tells of a hopeful future in the direction of the floating light. きっと今、こうして世界中に溢れていく命のもと、種たちが今度は正真正銘、メディオの命として芽吹くだろう。もしかしたら、今度こそ生贄など必要とせぬ。正しき意味でのメディオの世界中も誕生するやもしれない。I see. The reason why this world tree was a disaster is because it originated in a foreign world and eventually mutated in this world. If it is purely made from life in this world, at the very least, he claims, the future will not be so grim. Hey, Kanis. When that future comes, let's come back here again. To the highest point here. To a reborn and truly beautiful Medio. Oh. Kanis nods. It... Oh. I'm like, what the hell is that noise? <laughs> and as if to engrave the scenery into his memory, he removes his helmet. At that moment, the world and the sunrise fully become one as the light shines ever so beautifully. Kanis, after spilling these words from the depths of his heart, and with his helmet still off, uh, still off, he once again turns around and faces me. Uh, what, what happened? 